Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, <laughs> DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, look us up in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, today, August the 22nd, 2013, there's an article on BoxingScene.com in which Bernard Hopkins makes the claim that Sergei Kovalev took the easy way to a title and that Kovalev was his mandatory, Hopkins is mandatory, and chose not to fight Hopkins. Right, Hopkins even goes further and makes the point that John David Jackson, Kovalev's trainer, um, is a former Hopkins opponent and doesn't want his fighters fighting Bernard Hopkins. Well, let me just say, people here know that Hopkins is one of my favorite fighters. Even my cat knows that. I've taken Hopkins in some pretty big fights. But I think Bernard would be making one of the biggest mistakes of his career if he hops in the ring with Sir Jack Kovalev, who, quite frankly, is underrated, who, quite frankly, today should be on pound-for-pound pound lists, right? In the first round of the Nathan Cleverly fight, a guy who had as good a night as Kovalev and that's Max Kellerman of HBO, makes the point that while we're all dazzled by Kovalev's punching power, which is prodigious, Kovalev is doing little things in the ring, taking steps back, fainting, going to the body, that shows a high boxing IQ, right? This guy, quite frankly, is not an ambush fighter. He's not John Pascal. Right? He's not a guy with hand speed and punching power who lays in the bushes, then hops out, attacks you, and then goes back to the side of the road, giving an older fighter like Hopkins an opportunity to pace himself and also to brace himself for the ambush. Right? That's not who Kovalev is. People need to realize that he's actually a chess player. He's not ambushing you. He's there the whole fight. And in my opinion, he's harder to predict than Tavares Cloud, who's always on his front foot. Right? Kovalev actually boxes a bit. When you look at the first round of the Cleverly fight, you're going to see Kovalev is actually shooting a left jab. Right? You're going to notice, too, that Kovalev can actually bend at the waist. He's not stiff. You're going to notice that he has excellent balance. He's balanced at all times. He's very accurate. And he's not a one-trick pony. He's two-handed. And he throws excellent body shots. Quite frankly, I thought the body shots are what did in Nathan Cleverly. Right, Cleverly gets hit with so many hard body shots that there is simply no way that Cleverly has any power on his punches by the midway point of the third round. Understand that those body shots take away your torque. They take away your ability to load up and use those stomach muscles to get leverage on your own shots. Right? I think Kovalev is a major player. I think you need to overlook the fact that Kovalev has never gone by the eighth round, right? I think you need to consider Kovalev a guy who, quite frankly, has the boxing skills, not just the punching skills, but has the boxing skills to hold his own against the elite in the division, right? Right now, I believe he beats Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins is a notoriously slow starter, right? Hopkins likes to give away a round or two while he watches you and figures out your pattern, right? Now here we saw Sergey Kovalev against an excellent athlete, a guy who typically sprints out of the gate, 
Nathan Cleverly. And Kovalev was actually the one on his front foot at times in the fight. Right? He had literally fought back Cleverly's aggressiveness and was out to a fast start and had Cleverly backing up. I think Kovalev likely takes the first two rounds against Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins isn't a big puncher. Kovalev is. Right? I believe Kovalev against Hopkins would have the bigger margin of error. Right? Where Kovalev might get tripped up. And it's evident from the CompuBox numbers in the Cleverly fight. It's on the pacing of the fight. Kovalev is not a guy who comes in and clinches you that much. Right? Kovalev instead lets his hands go. One can imagine that a Bernard Hopkins would come in and try to clinch, would come in and try to disrupt Kovalev's rhythm. But understand the problem with it, right? First of all, Kovalev throws nice short hooks. He's not a guy who needs a lot of space to throw very hard punches. Also, Kovalev keeps his hands up here, right? Clinching him, clinching any fighter who has his hands up like this, is harder to do than clinching a guy who has his hands down around his waist, right? You can then come in, grab the guy's biceps, and literally tie him up. A guy like this, especially a guy like Kovalev who throws punches to the body, when you come in to clinch, Kovalev can just reach a hand back. Suddenly, he has a free weapon and can hit you in the ribs. I think 48-year-old Bernard Hopkins is just playing with the press, right? He's calling out a fighter who, quite frankly, in my opinion, he doesn't want to fight. Let me say, when Kovalev was Hopkins' mandatory before Kovalev fought Nathan Cleverly, Hopkins had ample opportunity to say to his people, look, I don't want to fight Karo Murat, get me Kovalev. Hopkins, who is a partner in Golden Boy Promotions, in other words, a promotional group with major press access, could easily have issued a statement through Golden Boy and could have said, look, you know, Kovalev, come get this. Right? He didn't. Instead, Hopkins laid in the weeds, waited until Kovalev fought cleverly, beat cleverly. Now Hopkins is claiming that Kovalev is dodging him. Right? Let's also remember that Hopkins, for a very long time, claimed that Roy Jones was dodging him. Right? And then, of course, Roy Jones, in interview after interview, said, I'm willing to fight Bernard Hopkins, and yet those guys didn't quite have that rematch for several years. Right? So don't be fooled by all the posturing. I believe that boxing aficionados, especially guys who appreciate boxing skills like Bernard Hopkins, are fully aware of who Sergei Kovalev is. Kovalev may not have ever gone past the eighth round, but this guy is a real fighter. He is dangerous. He is skilled. He's not just a puncher. He has defensive skills, rolls with punches, and can slip punches. Right. Also, in terms of being a puncher, Understand he's economical. He's not in there free swinging. There's a method to the madness. By the end of the Nathan Cleverly fight, Cleverly had been hit with not only several lefts up top, he had been hit with several lefts to the body. Kovalev during that fight is adaptive reactive. He's making changes based on what Cleverly is doing. Kovalev is an advanced fighter. He's one of the hardest hitters pound for pound in the sport. As much as I love Bernard Hopkins, if a Hopkins-Kovalev fight is announced, put me down as rolling with Sergei Kovalev. Let me also point out, too, that Kovalev just beat Nathan Cleverly in his backyard. In my opinion, Sergei Kovalev could fight Bernard Hopkins in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I'd be rolling with Sergei Kovalev. I think he is someone you need to keep an eye on. Let me also say this too. 
and I think it's an interesting part of the fight. After Cleverly hits the canvas twice in the third round, there is a moment where Kovalev comes in. Now keep in mind, if you're an excitable fighter who might get a little bit overexcited, after knocking down the reigning champ twice in a round as you step forward, that would be a time when you'd be overly excited. You want to know what Kovalev does? He throws a great shot that hits cleverly in the body. It's an excellent body shot. Cleverly actually hits the canvas. I believe the referee makes a mistake by calling that punch a slip. Just look at that uncalled third knockdown in the third round and realize that Sergey Kovalev is such an assassin that even when he has a guy reeling in the ring, he's thinking through to the point where he's throwing body shots, right? Cleverly has no chance in the fight, none whatsoever, right? Kovalev is a technician. Kovalev is an assassin. He now has a share of the light heavyweight title. His people have been talking about taking on the biggest names out there, not just at 175 pounds, but also at 168 pounds. I believe this guy is the real deal. I would certainly take him over Bernard Hopkins, a guy who I took over Kelly Pavlik when Pavlik was unbeaten and over Jean Pascal. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. My point to you is simply this. Sometimes major talents just arrive on the scene. Right? Two years ago, very few people knew who Janady Golovkin was. Right? I'll agree, a year ago, very few people knew who Sergei Kovalev was. Both of these guys are major talents in the sport. It takes a long time for the mainstream to put guys in their pound-for-pound -pound lists. I'll tell you what, here on YouTube, let's do that. These guys are two of the best fighters in the sport. Thanks for stopping by.